Spice, we've got a fun review today as we're discussing Lisa Frankenstein. Now, surprisingly, this is my first foray into these mystery movie nights a lot of these theater chains have been doing for a while now. AMC, Regal, even Cinemark does them now. Honestly, this was my first time going because I was pretty sure it was going to be Lisa Frankenstein. Thankfully, I was correct. Otherwise, well, first of all, you wouldn't be getting this video of me talking about it, but also, it would have just been a very awkward experience sitting in the theater for something else entirely. Lisa Frankenstein follows a misunderstood teen teenager and her unconventional high school crush who is brought back to life after a set of playfully horrific circumstances which leads the two of them to embark on a murderous journey to find love, happiness, and a few missing body parts along the way. Lisa Frankenstein fully commits as far as playing into this over-the-top 1980s aesthetic with a vibrant color palette, its costume design, and the makeup fully coming together with Lisa's fashion, which pretty much feels like it was ripped right out of Lydia Dietz's closet from Beetlejuice. Going into a film like this, I fully expected the story to embrace the campy side of things, which at points this movie absolutely does, and when it does, it is delightfully charming. All of the shenanigans that ensue once the creature is brought back to life. Most of that stuff within the story of Lisa Frankenstein I thought was the best part. Those sequences were absolutely hilarious. Catherine Newton and Cole Sprouse specifically were fully invested into the over-the-top material as the two of them truly make the most of each of the weird macabre situations thrusted upon their awkward situation before inevitably going into the Frankenstein side of the story, going on quests to get him new appendages thanks to this unexpected combination between murder and using a tanning bed. I kid you not, the main way that we get these parts to work on the creature by zapping him with a tanning bed. Considering the fact that Cole Sprouse has basically no dialogue the entire film, I thought his performance by and large still was pretty great. He manages to convey so much charm and emotion just through his mannerisms coupled with Catherine Newton's awkward personality building up their chemistry. There are several different sequences, particularly in the middle of the movie, that made me laugh out loud. One of those instances that I love the most probably was the usage of an REO Speedwagon song. On top of the running gag that whenever the creature cries, his tears smell awful. Outside of Cole Sprouse in the cast, the person I was most impressed with, to be honest, was probably Liza Sobrano, who was someone that I am not familiar with. Apparently, she's a really big star over in the Philippines, but this is her big Hollywood debut. And I gotta say, for this being her big Hollywood debut, I think it's a pretty excellent debut. I can see this being a star-making performance for her. The way that she plays Lisa's stepsister as this bubbly, fun character was truly one of the best parts to Lisa Frankenstein. She even had some of the best comedic moments in the movie and I love basically every single scene that she was in. So count me in as a new fan of her. I would love to see her in basically anything, whether it be horror, drama, whatever she wants. Her role in this wasn't very large or anything. I'd be remiss not to mention the fact that Carlo Giugino in this. I love Carlo Giugino. Not one of my favorite performances of her if I'm being honest. I think she just goes a little bit too over the top with her performance as this weird malicious stepmother. Also another newcomer is the director of Lisa Frankenstein, Zelda Williams, who many of us probably know as the daughter of the legendary Robin Williams. This is her feature length debut. She has directed music videos, but this is her first ever film. And for this being her directorial debut, I thought it was quite solid. The influences certainly are there because Lisa Frankenstein does evoke that classic Tim Burton feeling of like Edward Scissorhands or Beetlejuice. I'd even say some parts of this even feel like Heathers a little bit, although that's not Tim Burton. But Zelda Williams still also manages to have her own signature flair in certain sequences. And I think it's a well shot movie, especially for it being her first ever ever one. So I would definitely be intrigued on see where she goes next if she wants to continue doing horror or branch out into other genres. Now Catherine Newton is an interesting one because I'm kind of usually mixed on her performances by and large depending on the film. For me at least her performance in this I almost liked her character less and less as the film progressed. First you have some level of sympathy for Lisa and get invested because she's this odd dark loner type coming out of her depression thanks to this creature. But the big issue here it doesn't ever feel like Lisa goes through an arc at all. She's given this extremely dark, depressing backstory, which builds up her personality, I guess you could say. But from the moment that she starts going down this darker path in the story, she just embraces it wholeheartedly. Even as the pressure is put on her from the things that her and the creature do over the course of the film, she never ends up growing as a character or learning anything by the end. If anything, I think the last third of this movie is probably my least favorite part of it, just because the ending, at least to me, kind of falls flat on all aspects. It's just an oddly executed story that I definitely 
don't think is going to be for everyone. I think if you're a big fan of Diablo Cody's style of writing, you're probably going to appreciate a little bit more. Given that parts of the story are awesome narratively, while others just drag since it never leans hard enough into the horror, the campiness, or even the romance, Lisa and the creature do have some chemistry, but I never felt like they had any romantic chemistry. Even just within this story, Lisa doesn't have a lot of affection towards him, at least till the last third of the movie or so. Instead, having this crush on a whole other guy which ends in an extremely predictable way as long as you're paying attention. More or less, Lisa Frankenstein has some charm to its weirdly twisted take on a horror comedy. It isn't bound to become a cult classic by any means. This isn't something I think you have to rush out and see in theaters immediately or anything. This very much feels like something you could just watch on streaming. Based on this story by and large, I don't know if necessarily I would say this is a great romantic movie to watch on Valentine's Day like they're trying to market it as. It isn't an overtly romantic film by any means. Maybe watch something else instead in the horror comedy range if you're gonna watch something on Valentine's Day as opposed to this. Ironically, if you want to stick with Diablo Cody and you want to watch something on Valentine's Day, just watch Jennifer's Body. Jennifer's Body is a classic in my eyes and a far superior horror comedy than what you would see in Lisa Frankenstein. But neither of my thoughts on Lisa Frankenstein. Make sure you share your thoughts down below once you get a chance to check out the film. If you see it in theaters, what'd you think of the film? Did you like Lisa Frankenstein? Did you not like Lisa Frankenstein? Is this going to be your horror movie that you watch with your partner on Valentine's Day? Or are you just going to skip it entirely? Either way, show your thoughts down below because part of the fun is to have that conversation with you guys in the comment section. Thank you guys as always for checking out the videos. I always do appreciate it. Make sure you like on the video and also subscribe to the channel to so update reviews, reactions, unboxings, and more. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.